Hey, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about something called loops. Loops are really important in programming. They're like one of the main three concepts, uh, along with you know um, conditional statements and variables. And what loops let you do is they let you do something more than once without repeating it. For example, let's start with an example that you know th this isn't practical. So you wouldn't actually do this, but you know you'd have a similar situation where you'd have something like this. So let's say you wanted to do one thing more than once with you know maybe a little difference with each time. So let's say that I wanted to write something. Um, and remember, this isn't practical. You wouldn't do this, but I'm just showing you just for example. So let's say you want to write so this is line, and then you say one, and then you want to do this, you know, let's say ten times. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so let's say you want to do this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. So see how this gets really repetitive. And what if you what if you don't know how many times you have to do this? What do you have, what if you have some variable that the user is going to fill in, and you know you have to do it that many times? Um, so this can be really repetitive and it's static, so it's not that useful. Now we can replace this with a loop and make it much much better. So the way you do it, let's make a new tab. I'll make a new tab. Rename this to loop loops. So the first thing we need to do is when you're writing a loop. You need something called a counter. It's like a variable that keeps track of how many times your loop has gone through. So how we do this is we declare a variable, make it anything you want. Usually they call it i, but you can name it whatever you want, and you make it an integer. And originally you set it equal to zero. All right. So now let's. We're not going to do this forward to backwards. I'm just going to kind of. Um, skip around a little bit just to make it easier. So first we write down what we want to do. So let's say that we want to begin and end. So we want to do something between here more than once. So what, what should we do? We want to say right line and then we, we want to say um, you know this is line number and then we'll leave this blank for now but you're gonna fill this in later with the number here. Alright so we want to do something in here so how we do it more than once is right before this we say um, while some condition we do something. Okay, so this while something do means while whatever is in here is true. So remember when we did conditional statements, if then, we said if something is true, then do something. Okay, this is the same way. While this part is true, it'll keep executing this. So um, let's say we want to do this 10 times. So what we would do is we would say while i is less than 10, all right? And then here, remember, each time the loop executes, we have to increment the loop. We have to increment the counter. So we do i equals i plus 1. So let's go through this real quick. So let's say i is 0 at first. Then we ask, we, we ask scar. OK, it gets to here and asks scar. Is i less than 10? Well, i right now is 0, so that's less than 10. So it's true, so it does this part right here. So what it does is increments i, writes whatever's in here, and then ends it. And then because it's a loop, when it ends, it goes way back here again, and it says, OK, is i still less than 10? So what is i now? i is 1, because i, remember we incremented it, we added 1 to i. We said i equals the old i plus 1. All right, so i equals one now. One is still less than ten, so we go back here and we do this again, one more time. So we do this again. We increment i again. We write something again, and we end. And when we end, we go back here again, and we ch we check is i still ten. So we keep doing this until i is not less than ten. So when when as soon as i becomes ten, then this fails and it'll skip this part and go on to whatever's you know, next, whatever we have to do next, okay? So let's actually add something just to see how it does it. Um, we're going we're gonna to add, add an i. So what, how you do this is you have to convert, remember you have to convert i to a string because right line takes a string, it takes something to print and it needs to be text. And i is an integer, you can't print an integer. So what we do is we say i int to a string. Okay, so we converted i to a string. We, uh, we added it to the end of this string, 
So now the whole thing is this is line number plus whatever i is, okay? And then we're gonna run it. So let's let's run and see what happens. Let's clear and run. See? This is line number one, this is line number two, this is line number four, whatever. It keeps going until ten. Because when i is nine, it increments to ten and then writes out ten. And then it checks, is ten less than ten? That's false, so it exits. So that's that's one of the loops. This may be a little confusing. I can't. Uh, I would need a lot more time to go into detail. But um, from this basic structure, you can form a lot of different loops. You can do different things. You can even have you know something more dynamic than this. Something more uh, more complicated than this. Maybe you want to. Maybe you want to move the mouse ten pixels to the right every time. So you know you could do something like that. You could do anything you want. And remember, this is a condition. It could be anything you want. It doesn't have to be a number. It doesn't have to test a number. You can test anything you want a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to show you a different kind of loop. There are, there are three main types of loops, and I'm going to show you all three of them. So this other type of loop, this is called a while loop. And the next kind of loop is called a repeat loop. And it uses, it's pretty much almost the same, the same, um, it, it looks almost the same, except instead of having the condition up here, you have the condition down here. So let's rewrite this. We'll, we would say, um, so we would say until, all right, and then here we would do repeat like this, and we don't even need begin. So this would be the same thing. Let's try it. Oops, this is actually wrong, and I'm actually kind of glad I got this wrong because this might show you um, the problems you might run into. So, for example, and let's let's see what it does here. Let's see what the script does. We'll read it from top to bottom. So, I zero at first, right? I zero, and when when Scar sees repeat, it does whatever's next and then checks the condition. So, in, you know, in, in the while loop. It would check the condition first. Is this true? Do it. If it's not, then no, do it. But in repeat, it's useful if you want to do something first and then check if you want to go back and do more. So in this case, we want to do something first and then check. So what we do is, at first we add 1 to 0. So now i is 1. And now we write out, you know, this is line number 1. And next, we check, is i less than 10? Since i is 1, 1 is less than 10, so we, we exit it. So the repeat loop is kind of opposite of while loop. And you can kind of tell from the um, keywords. For example, in the while loop, it would say, while this statement is true, you, you do something. But in the repeat, it's the opposite. It says, repeat this, keep doing this, until the statement is true. So since, in our case, 1 is less than 10, which is true, so it stops. If, if you know, if we wanted to go backwards, let's say we did something like 20, and then we would subtract 1 each time. We could do that. You know, we start from 20, we subtract 1 each time, and we'd say, keep doing this until, until i is less than 10. So as soon as i is 9, we're going to stop doing this. So let's see what happens here. See? We start with 19, 18, 17, 16, and we went all the way to 9, and then, and then 9 is less than 10, so it stops. So that's those are the two first loops, all right. And before we go into the third loop, how would you actually implement the same full? I mean, the same while loop that we had. So what would you do is uh, you'd say zero plus one, and instead of checking um, if it's less than ten, you could check that it's greater than or equal to ten. So it'll keep doing this until i is equal to or greater than ten. Right, so let's run it. See the same thing. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten. Same thing as the while loop that we made. Alright, now the last kind of loop is called a for loop. And it's actually probably one of the most used loops because it kind of does everything for you. Um, for this one, what how you do you what you do like this. So you say for and then you say i equals zero. So this is where it starts. It says i starts at zero and it goes until whatever number you give it goes to 10 you do whatever you want to do and you say begin and, and you do whatever you want between here so for i equals 0 to 10 so i will start at 0 and actually let's start with 1 
So I will start at 1, and it'll go to 10. It'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And each time, it will do something here. Now, the, the reason the for loop is a little um, easier to use is because it, it increments this i for you. Remember how in the last one we had to do i equals i plus 1? Well, in this one, you don't have to do that because the for loop does it for you automatically. So all we have to do is say write line... Um, this is line number, and then we say plus int to a string, and say i. Alright, let's run it and see what happens. See? And so it starts with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it did it 10 times. From 1 to 10, it wrote out this. And remember, this is a really big mistake with for loops for beginners. A lot of beginners forget that the for loop um, adds one each time by itself. So they'll, you, they'll do something like this. They'll say, they'll forget, and they'll say i equals i plus 1. And what, what do you think will happen this time? Well, let's run it. See, it starts at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Why does it do that? Well, because i starts at 1, but then you add 1, and you do something. So this now it's 2, right? So it's at 2. You, you write out 2. And then it goes back here, and it adds 1 to it again by itself. It automatically adds 1 to i. So now i is actually... It has two added to it because you forgot and you added one, and then the for loop also added one. So it keeps counting by two. See, two, four, six, eight, ten. So remember that the for loop increments by itself. And before I end this video, I am going to leave you with a really important warning, and that is that you should be very careful about in infinite loops. It's very easy to get into an infinite loop. So, for example, um, if you have some condition, for for example, if you have a while loop, let's say while, um, let's say, let's use the same one. So let's say i is less than ten. Do, and we'll say i equals zero. But what if we just forgot to increment i? So what would happen? Let's let's run it. See, it keeps printing zero. See, look down here, it keeps printing it because there's no, it never, i is never less than 10 because we never increment it. It'll just keep running forever. That's called an infinite loop, so be very careful about those. And if something, you know, keeps going forever, you'll know that to check your loop. All right, well, good luck. Um, we'll talk about this a little more when we get to arrays, and I'll also show you how to do a, a, little, a few more things with the find color function and, and loops. For now, just practice with this a little bit. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.